2024 offseason is officially upon us, which means it's time to talk about cut candidates and free agents for the 2024 offseason for your Pittsburgh Steelers. Today, we're going to be breaking down all the players that I think the Steelers will cut, all the players they may consider cutting, and we're also going to go over all of the free agents as well as the guys that I think the Steelers could resign heading into the 2024 season. But before we break down all of today's content, do me a favor, click that subscribe button to join the largest Steelers talk show here on YouTube, 100% free. We just overtake uh, or just overtook our biggest competitor as the largest Steelers talk show here on YouTube. Thank you to everybody that has joined our family and helped us grow exponentially over the past year or so. Uh, here over this offseason, we're going to have breaking news coverage for you guys every single day. When they hire their new offensive coordinator, if they make a trade for somebody, if when they sign people in free agency, we're going to have breaking news coverage for you guys. And speaking of free agency... Uh, we're going to have in-depth coverage for you guys, letting you know who the Steelers are targeting. We're going to have breaking news videos when they sign players, and then also the NFL draft. Weekly Steelers mock drafts uh, once we get closer to the big day. In-depth scouting reports on all the top Steelers draft targets. You're not going to get better, more in-depth coverage on the NFL draft for the Pittsburgh Steelers than right here. We're also doing weekly live shows this offseason every single Wednesday. And oh yeah, it's all 100% free. So if you love the Pittsburgh Steelers, you want to become an expert on this football team this offseason, and you never want to miss a big moment, do me a favor. Click that subscribe button right now. So let's start with uh, how much the Steelers uh, have in total cap space heading into the 2024 offseason. And right now, the Steelers are kind of up against it right now. Negative, over negative $17 million in cap space is projected right now, which means the Steelers are going to have to move some things around. They're going to have to make some cuts. They're going to have to restructure some contracts to get back uh, in the black here because right now they're in the red and that's definitely not the best situation to be in right now obviously with some of these bigger contracts kicking in in 2024. So now let's do some cutting here and there's five players currently on the Pittsburgh Steelers roster for 2024 that I think the team is definitely going to cut. So let's start with the with the guys I think are definitely getting cut here. Allen Robinson, I mean you can save 10 million dollars in cap space for next season. If you cut him, he really didn't do much for this offense this year. He was a decent run blocker, but he's definitely not, not worth uh, keeping around here as a starting slot wide receiver. Chuck Wuma core for backup offensive tackle. You can save almost $9 million in cap space by getting rid of him. I think that he's gone. Mitch Trubisky absolutely uh, was terrible when he was the starter of this football team this season. I would be surprised if he's a, a, a number two quarterback Anywhere in the National Football League this year, you do have to eat about as much dead cap as you would be saving. But personally, guys, I do not want Mitchell Trubisky on this team, and I do think he's going to get cut. Demonte KZ, uh, he had a really promising end to his 2022 season, but this year he just looked slow. He didn't look like a starting safety in this league, and you can save $3 million while giving up less than a million dollars in dead cap. So I think KZ is gone. And then also Presley Harvin the third. Uh, Mike Tomlin called him out uh, in his end of season press conference saying he just wasn't good enough down the stretch. Uh, pretty much no dead cap there if you release him and you save uh, just over a million dollars. So I think those five guys for sure are getting cut. But now let's talk about some guys that they may or may not cut, starting with Mason Cole. Now you could save almost $5 million if you cut the starting center here. Uh, you would take on about $1.5 million in dead cap. And listen, Mason Cole, there, under no circumstances should this guy be the starting center for the Pittsburgh Steelers next year, but he would be a strong backup center. He's, he's had a lot of experience in this league. Of course, he started for this team the last two years. He's, if, if you go with Kenny Pickett or Mason Rudolph next year, he does have chemistry with those guys. So if your new starting center next year goes down with an injury, I think that Mason Cole would be a decent backup. Now, if you need that extra $5 million to maybe go get a quarterback or maybe sign another big name free agent, okay, you can go ahead and, and cut Mason Cole. But I think if you can keep him as a good backup center, I think that makes sense for the Pittsburgh Steelers moving forward. Then we go to another offensive lineman here that under no circumstances should be starting for this team next year, and that's Dan Moore Jr., the offensive tackle, has been the starting left tackle here for a while now. You can save about a million dollars if you cut him, but honestly, at this point, he is a cheap swing tackle 
uh, as a backup that I think would be a really good uh, backup tackle in this league, right? You get Broderick Jones, you get another tackle in free agency or the draft next year. And then you have Dan Moore Jr. as your first line of defense, somebody that can play on either side of the formation and somebody uh, that if Broderick or that new offensive tackle goes down, you can trust on the football field. I mean, Dan Moore Jr. certainly isn't, has, wasn't, wasn't a good offensive tackle this year, but he definitely wasn't atrocious, right? He was somebody that, as a backup, could come in and play decent football for you if you absolutely needed to. Because he, his cap hit is so low, I think it makes sense to keep him on the roster in 2024. Now, coming up here, I got probably the most surprising cut candidate on my list today. I'll reveal who that is here in just a second. But first, uh, let, let me talk about uh, Joey Porter Jr. here because I think that Joey Porter Jr., number 24, uh, he's going to be the lockdown number one corner here in Pittsburgh for a very, very long time. And if you want to make an investment in a Steelers jersey, I can't think of a better jersey to get than Joey Porter Jr. If you're looking for something that's going to last you the next decade, uh, let's say you don't have quite a, enough money to get a bunch of different jerseys, Joey Porter Jr.'s jersey is going to last you a very long time. And you can get a great deal on his jersey from our friends at Fanatics right now by going to chatsports.com. Slash Joey Porter Jr. to get your hands on this awesome jersey today. If you guys watch the watch parties, the jerseys that I wear during our watch parties are from Fanatics. So if you want to get a really high quality jersey, you can get it right now. Chatsports.com slash Joey Porter Jr. to add this jersey to your collection today. All right, so here we go. Patrick Peterson, the cornerback, defensive back, whatever you guys want to call him. Could certainly get cut uh, if they don't really see a role from him in the future. Like DeMonte KZ, he did look a little bit slower this year. You do save uh, uh, almost $7 million if you cut him. You do have to take on $3 million in dead cap. And listen, personally, I wouldn't cut Pat Pete because I would like to move him to safety. Now, I, th I don't think he has the quicks uh, and, and the speed anymore to play outside cornerback in this league with all the shifty new wide receivers coming in. I mean, he got toasted on the outside quite a bit this year, including in that playoff game against the Buffalo Bills. But when he had to fill in at free safety for Minka Fitzpatrick when he was injured this year, his instincts really showed. His savviness really showed. I think he's got great instincts. He's got great eyes and coverage. Uh, and I, I think that safety is kind of a good transition for him heading into 2024. So although you could save some cap space if you're the Pittsburgh Steelers by cutting Patrick Peterson, you don't see him as a, as, a, as a valuable contributor to this defense moving forward. Uh, fine, but I think that he's got the leadership. I think he's got the instincts to still play safety in this league, and I think that that takes away just another team need heading into the 2024 offseason. Then we go to safety here, and another guy you could consider cutting is Keanu Neal, uh, somebody that I don't really see as a true starter in this league. You can save uh, two and a quarter million dollars if you cut him. So if, like I said, if you guys need the extra uh, cap space there to go get a free agent, whatever the case may be, Keanu Neal is going to be a backup for you next year. Regardless, you could potentially make this move. But I'd like to see Keanu Neal back as kind of like a true box safety, somebody that can come in in a rotational role next year in, in obvious rushing situations, a goal line player. I think that I would like to see Keanu Neal back as a, a true backup piece. Uh, but if you need the extra cap space, could definitely see him getting cut as well. And then somebody that, you know, I don't see getting cut just because, you know, the cap hit's not all that bad, but somebody that's definitely been a disappointment to this point in his Pittsburgh Steelers career, DeMarvin Leal. Uh, you can save about a million dollars if you cut him. Not much dead cap if you cut him. So if you needed that extra million, whatever the case may be, Leal has definitely been a disappointment to this point in his Pittsburgh Steeler career. So uh, when, when you take into account these cuts here, if you just go with the first five, the guys that I would absolutely 100% cut, that saves you 25 and three quarters of a million dollars uh, with, with, with the definite guys, okay? So that will get you back in the black, but just those five guys would just give you guys a, a, a pretty limited amount of, of cap space to use in NFL free agency. So probably no, not getting any big name players in free agency if you just go with those five guys. Uh, but if you cut all of these guys, all 10 of these cut candidates, you could save up to 41.6 
million, dollars, uh, which would certainly give you uh, some room to potentially go out and get some nice free agents here during the offseason. So now let's go over some of the free agents for the Pittsburgh Steelers here heading into 2024. And honestly, there's not a whole lot of big names that are hitting the free agency market for the Pittsburgh Steelers. They have most of their really good players still under contract for at least the next season. Uh, but there are six players that I would consider re-signing here for the right price. Now, uh, I, could, I could certainly see all these guys going elsewhere uh, if they're asking for too much money, etc. But Miles Killebrew, great leader in this locker room, great special teams player, seems to have a block punt every single year. Would love to have him back. Marcus Golden was good in that rotational role this year. Good run, run defender. I would certainly love to bring him back for a, for a nice uh, team-friendly deal. Same thing with Kawan Alexander. I think that the Steelers are going to want to go get a third inside linebacker again this free agency period. Uh, he could be the answer once again. Armin Watts is somebody that was decent in a role this year as well. If, you, if he goes for like the vet minimum, for example, could see that happening. Elijah Riley uh, brings that versatility, can play slot corner, can play safety. And then Montrevious Adams, uh, he's not the best player in the world. Keanu Benton is the future uh, at the nose tackle position here in Pittsburgh. But he'd be a decent backup with a good motor. I think he's a good locker room presence as well. As for the uh, key players that I would let walk here in free agency, Mason Rudolph, uh, Levi Walsh, James Pierre, Chandon Sullivan, and Mike Cal Walker, all these guys, I just don't think it, it's worth bringing back. And I think the big name here to discuss is, of course, the quarterback, Mason Rudolph. Because I know what you're saying, Jack, this guy led us to three straight victories and a playoff berth and had us within a touchdown in the fourth quarter against the Buffalo, uh, against the Buffalo Bills. Why do you want to get rid of him? Well, I just think that at this point, I don't like him enough to start him next year because I don't think he can win a Super Bowl. I think that the Steelers need to make a bigger move at the quarterback position. I think he's an okay quarterback. I think he's somebody that could be a good spot starter, a good bridge quarterback, a really good backup in this league, but I don't really see him going up against guys like Joe Burrow, Patrick Mahomes, Josh Allen on the road in the playoffs and beating them. And because of that, I want to make a bigger move. And then I don't want to bring him back as a backup because the fan base loves him too much. No matter who is in the starting role, uh, every time they make an incompletion, every time they make an interception, every time they make a bad throw, it's going to be, we want Mason. <laughs> and that's just not good, all right? That's just not good for the person that's in that starting chair, especially if it's Kenny Pickett. Uh, so I think that the time is now for Mason Rudolph uh, to go elsewhere. I love the kid. He's a Steelers legend, but I just don't think it makes sense uh, from a locker room perspective to bring him back. However, my prediction here is that they actually do bring him back. It seems like the Steelers really like him. It seems like they want to bring him back. I don't think any team in the National Football League heading into the offseason is going to offer him a starting role. And at least here in Pittsburgh, it sounds like they would give him a fighting chance to start next year over Kenny Pickett in the new offense. Uh, and because this place is probably the best shot that he has to start next year, I think at the end of the day, something is going to get done and Mason Rudolph will be back in 2024. Now, what say you guys? Let me know down there in the comment section. Should the Steelers bring back Mason Rudolph this offseason? Type Y for yes or N for no. Let me know what you guys think down there in the comment section. For me, it's an N for no, but let me know what you think. So the last thing to talk about on today's show is the projected 2024 team needs based on these cut candidates and based on the free agents uh, for the Steelers this offseason. So for me, I think the pressing needs are, are definitely cornerback, right? Patrick Peterson's moving the safety, in my opinion. You're letting Levi Wallace and James Pierre go, right? Joey Porter Jr. is the really, really good outside cornerback, your number one guy, but you need to put somebody on the other side of him that's really legit. And then with Chandon Sullivan out of the building as well, you need to get a really good nickel uh, back as well. Also, you need a new punter. We just cut Presley Harvin the third because he sucks. You need to get somebody new in that role. Then you get offensive tackle. We're keeping Dan Moore Jr. and, and cutting Chuck Wumo core for, but you got Broderick Jones on either side, depending on what they decide to do. You need to add another starter uh, on the other side of Broderick. And then you need another center, Mason Cole. You keep him as a backup, but you need to get a new starter. That, that, that just seems obvious to me. And then quarterback, whether it be as a starter with like a trade for Justin Fields, or as a backup like a Jacoby Brissett to be a high-end backup to Kenny Pickett this next year, you have to go out and get some sort of quarterback 
in my opinion, whether that's Mason Rudolph, whether that's Jacoby Brissett, or whether that's a guy like Justin Fields. I don't know, but you have to add another quarterback here in free agency. And some of the lesser needs for the Pittsburgh Steelers here, wide receiver, uh, you know, Calvin Austin III is fine, but I think you definitely want to get another person in that room to kind of be a good contributor for this offense next year. I think Calvin is more of a, a gadget player at this point in his career, more of a special team specialist. Inside linebacker, you want that number three inside linebacker. You have a Landon Roberts, you have Cole Holcomb. Those are your starting guys, but you want that third piece in there to rotate in. That's what the Steelers like to do at that position. And then, of course, safety. Uh, I think a third safety would be good because you're cutting DeMonte KZ. Patrick Peterson is getting older, so having another safety in that room to help rotate things, whether that be Eric Rowe, whether that be somebody else, I don't know, but I think that would be another good thing for the Steelers to add this offseason as well. So let me know down there in the comments section, what is the biggest need for the Pittsburgh Steelers to address this offseason? Is it quarterback? Is it offensive tackle? Is it corner? Let me know down there in the comment section what you guys have to say. For me, I'm going to go corner. Uh, I think that you need to put somebody else on the other side of Joey Porter Jr. All right, so uh, later today, guys, uh, we're going we're gonna to try to do a double header here on Steelers Talk. We're going to go news and rumors for our second segment today, so make sure you guys click that subscribe button to make sure that you get that notification when we put out that second video today. It's probably going to come out around 7 p.m. Eastern tonight, and then tomorrow we have our perfect off-season plan. I'm going to take you guys through the entire off-season, letting you know the exact players I'm cutting the exact players that I'm signing, and we're, it's all going to end with the first mock draft for the Pittsburgh Steelers here on Steelers Talk for this season. Tomorrow's video, it's going to be a big one. You're not going to want to miss it, so make sure you click that subscribe button right now. Really do appreciate all of your guys' support. I will see you guys later today for the latest news and rumors surrounding the Pittsburgh Steelers.